Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform a USB BIOS flashback on the ASUS Strix B550-A Gaming. This is a pretty straightforward thing to do, and uh, if you've seen some of the other videos on ASUS boards, it's going to be a very similar process, but for those of you who are a little bit unsure and you don't know where to get the files from, etc., I'm going to go through the whole thing step by step, slowly and uh, safely, so you can hopefully get your board flashed the first time. Now, there are going to be some things you're going to need. You're going to need a working PC or a laptop or some other device to actually go onto the website to download and also to format your USB stick. So make sure you've got access to another PC. You will need a USB stick, ideally less than 32 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes or less. So you can format it to the FAT32 file system. If you've got a larger drive, you can actually make a smaller partition on that drive, a little bit more complicated and doesn't always work. So when you're trying to work out what works and what doesn't, then potentially that might be a problem. But I'll put a link in the video description to show you how to actually create a smaller partition on your larger USB stick. It's a pretty straightforward thing to do. Other things you're gonna need, obviously, you're gonna need your motherboard. Also somewhere to put it nice and stable and secure. Uh, I'm just gonna use the motherboard box, that's absolutely fine. You'll also need a power supply. So we've got a power supply on hand for that. And you'll need two connections from the power supply. Now, depending if your power supply is a modular, semi-modular or a captive cabled one, the only ones you're going to need is going to be the 24 pin main power connector and also you'll have either a 4 or 8 pin CPU or EPS connector. That's all you're going to need and also just to make yourself kind of familiar with the board and the layout so in terms of actually where things are going to go so in terms of the main power connector that one goes into this socket here the EPS connector goes into the top of the board just there there's a four pin and an eight pin on this particular one you can use either doesn't make any difference whatsoever or you can use both the choice is entirely up to you when it comes to the io on the back so this is our boss flashback button you should find it's got a nice distinct click to it when you press it if for some reason your button doesn't have a click then it might be actually broken so do check that if you press it and doesn't click then yeah it basically won't work if you're wondering which slot do you actually put your memory stick in some boards you can put it in any most of them these days tend to have a dedicated port so this one here is highlighted and it actually says bios on it so when you're ready just plug it into that port there and you're pretty much ready to go before we start looking at the files to download i'll quickly address something which gets asked an awful lot and that is do you need to do this on a bare board now the simple answer is no you don't you can do it on a fully built pc the choice is down to you for me personally, I find it a lot easier to do it now because if there's gonna be any problems and you can't get it to flash, at least you can rule out any of the other connected components to your PC. So if you've got maybe an M.2 drive, your processor's installed, you've got RAM on the board, any of those could have a potential fault with them which could prevent you from flashing your bars. So ideally, you can try it on a fully built system, but if you're having problems and it won't flash for some reason or other, you're probably gonna to have to end up stripping it down anyway. So with all that said, let's head over to the computer and we'll show you how to format the drive, get it prepared, and also how to get the USB BIOS flash file. So first of all, we're gonna head over to the website. So this is the UK based one, but you can go to whichever you want. I'll put some links for this in the video description as well. So essentially just search for your motherboard. So ROG Strix B550-A Gaming, make sure you get the right version, and then head over to the support tab over here in the top right hand corner and you can go into the BIOS and firmware section. So you've got drivers and tools, and you can go to BIOS and firmware. Now again, another question which gets asked very common, do you go for the very latest one? I would say yes, go for the very latest one, but there are a whole host of them. So if you don't want to update all the way, you don't necessarily have to, but I think it's a, a better bet to do that because newer BIOS patches will prevent things like the logo fail vulnerabilities and also support newer processors and also graphics cards with N.2 storage and all that kind of good stuff. As you can see here, there is a specific message saying, warning, before running the USB BIOS flashback tool, please rename the BIOS file using BIOS renamer. So this is really important. This actually is a little bit easier on ASUS boards than some others where you have to do it manually. So we'll download the file and show you how that's done. So we're gonna click on download, save it to somewhere that you can find easily. So I'm gonna do it to our Windows desktop, click on save, once that's finished, which it shouldn't take very long at all, we can minimize this window. We don't need that anymore. So now we've got our BIOS file on the desktop. We're gonna right click on this and we're gonna choose extract all. And we're just gonna extract it to the default location. So we're gonna click on extract. And there we go. There is our BIOS file. And also there is our BIOS renamer exe. 
So all you need to do is to double click on the EXE and this will be brought up. So it says the file has been renamed, blah, 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 etc. Press the key to continue. So I'm just going to press enter and there we go. So now it has renamed the file to something which the motherboard can actually recognize. This is a very important step. If you're just doing the BOSS update from actually within the BOSS and you have a working system, you don't need to rename the file. But if you're using the USB flashback method, you do have to do it. Otherwise, your motherboard will not be able to recognize the file and will do nothing with it at all. So the next thing to do is to prepare our USB drive. So we've got our USB drive plugged in here. It's currently got a file on it from another board, which we did a BOSS flashback. So let's format the drive. So we're going to right click and then we're going to choose format. We're going to choose FAT32. And the allocation size we're going to set to default. If there's any volume labels, I would suggest getting rid of those. For some reason, it does affect some boards more than others. So leaving it blank is the safest way. When you're ready, click on start. This will erase the drive in its entirety. So make sure there's no data on it that you actually need. As you see from that message there, if you're happy and you want to erase the drive, press OK. After a short while, let's say format complete. So we can click on OK. And now we can close down this window. So let's go back into our extracted folder. We're going to grab our cap file, right click on it. We're going to choose cut or copy, the choice is yours. And we're going to move it to our USB drive. So right click and paste. And just make sure the file size is right. So 32.772 kilobytes or 32 megabytes. So now we can eject this drive and go over to the test bed and get this thing flashed. Okay, so now we've got our flash file on our USB stick, got the motherboard set up. So EPS connector in the top, 24 pin power here. We've got our power supply currently in the off position. So let's install our USB drive. So this goes into that USB flash slot. So that's nice and ready. Turn on the power, nothing happened. That's a good sign. And now what we'll do is to press and hold the BOSS flashback button for about three seconds. That should be enough for it to start processing. One, two, three and release. And you should see that the BIOS LED is starting to flash as uh, hopefully you can there if we get a, a decent close up of that. And effectively now what we need to do is just wait. Now potentially you may find your power supply will switch on or at least the fans will start spinning that kind of thing. This particular unit has got a zero dB or zero noise fan so it's currently not kicked in. But our light is still flashing there which is a good sign. If it flashes maybe three or four times or about six times at the most and then stops or stays solid, that means it can't read the USB drive or potentially it can't read the file. So just kind of retract your steps. Potentially you might need to purchase another USB drive and try that. Just make sure you've done everything in the steps we laid out earlier, such as renaming the file, etc. And it's formatted FAT32. There is also a part of the drive where you can set it to GPT or MBR. We've done a separate video on that as well, so I'll link that in the video description as well. So again, if you're having problems with this and it is formatted FAT32 and you don't know what is going on, then you might need to actually change it from GPT to MBR so the system can actually read it. But with all that said, this is still flashing away, so it should take about four or five minutes. So we're going to let it carry on do its thing and we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so there we go. The drive has stopped flashing now, so that is it done and dusted. Sometimes you'll hear your power supply click to the off, but uh, this instance, because it's not basically spinning, you can't hear it at all. As long as the light has stopped flashing, then you are pretty much good to go. And you can turn it off at the mains or on the switch on the power supply. So like I said, that is all finished. So what we can do now is turn off power supply, just flip that to the off position. You can remove the USB stick and then disconnect the cables, etc. depending on what you want to do. Otherwise, if you want to, at this point, you can put on your processor, put on your RAM, graphics card, whatever you need to do, and you could test it in this situation just to make sure that it posts so you get a bar screen. That's probably a good idea before you do your full build, but otherwise, if it's actually in your build already, you should find that it's ready to go. So there you go. That is how to do a BOSS flash on the ASUS ROG Strix B550-A Gaming. If you've got any problems with this or any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Alternatively, you can join our Discord chat and we'll try and help you out as best we can there. But I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.